Hi, I am Rebecca Reinking and I have this, uh, I guess, passion for sharing really simple therapy tips and making speech therapy practice effective um, but easy. And I really want to show you and give you some ideas on how to use these 100 practices for speech sheets. Uh, we have them as a download on our website and there are 25 pages. And basically, um, I guess the anatomy of this sheet is that we have all these different themes, like, you know, Halloween themes, um, heart themes for Valentine's Day. We have some pirates. And basically there are 10 rows of 10 pictures. So on here, you have 100 mini pictures. And this uh, was intentional because if you are working on speech sounds, um, then you would like to be getting some high practice in your trials, and this is a way that you can do it. So I want to uh, give you some ideas on how I use these in my room. Now, first of all, in terms of setup, I do have some of these sheets laminated because I find that it's really easy when they're laminated. Um, I can put things on top of them and it's durable and it just saves time. But one of my favorite things to do is to get these plastic sleeves because you can write on them and rub off with whiteboard markers. So I'll put this Halloween themed one in and I'll give you my first favorite way to use these sheets. Now, if you are working with the child one-on-one, -on -one, it works really well. If you are doing some group therapy, it's even better. Uh, I like to have this game that it's called like a race to 50 uh, or like a race to see who can get to the end. Uh, so what I do is I count five lines down and I draw a line. And that represents the child's half and my half. So I'll do that now. One, two, three, four, five. Now what I say to the child is that we're going to get this dice here and we're going to roll the dice and whatever number we roll, let's say six, that is the number of times we're going to say our words or we're going to make sentences, whatever our target is, um, the sound we're working on, um, you know, and make the child um, say the number of trials that is shown on the dice. And let's say they did get six and they said their word six times, then they use their whiteboard marker and they can circle or cross off that um, they practice six times. And basically we just take turns, then it's my turn and I roll the dice. And if I get two, um, here's my secret tip, I still get the child to practice, even if it's for my turn, um, because I want them to get more practices in. So as you're going through, you know, I roll the two, we're marking these off and then it's the child's turn again. So they can see and they can track how many they've got left, how many more to go, and it's just a really nice, um, quick competitive game to play. So I'll leave you with that idea. Um, the second thing that you can do, uh, it's really easy, is you can just get any of your little mini um, manipulatives. So if you've got counters, um, it could be the same thing that you get a dice or it could just be um, every time I hear a word or if I'm listening to you in conversation, every time I catch you saying the correct S, I'm gonna put a counter down. And because you've got 10 rows of 10, um, you're gonna to start to see that this is actually quite a neat way to um, take some data collection because you can visually see how many practices the child has done. So um, counters are a really, really great idea. Another thing, um, if you use little minis, mini figurines, I got these from Speech Tree Co. Um, you might make a sentence, for example, about the seal. So it could be like the seal is sitting on a rock and then the child can put them down. Um, you know, if your next sentence is about the sunflower, um, I picked a sunflower and you can put it on top. So it's really quite flexible. And as an SLP, you can just keep track on how many practices you've said um, or how many trials you've got in your session because as I mentioned, you've got 10 rows of 10. So it's a really, really nice way just to get a lot of um, practices in and help you know um, how many you've done in your session. My other favourite thing to do is to use dabbers. Now I'm going to just get a little piece of paper here. I'll grab this camping theme one. Um, I like to just use dabbers and again the child will say their practices and then they get the dabber and they can dab um, how many times or how many words you heard. Uh, a really nice thing, I'll just show you how that shows up there. A really nice thing I like to do to increase self-awareness 
is I like to color code my data. So if we set our word correctly, we will do um, green. And so I will dab that I heard it. But if you know the tongue slipped out, or if our lips weren't round, or if that wasn't our S sound or our ch sound, uh, I would do a red and the child can instantly see. So I might set up a goal like, let's see if we can get this whole page green or I wonder how many green circles we can get. And you know, if you forget, I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna dab it in red. And um, it sets a really nice motivation for the child because they want to get, um, you know, a whole row of 10 or they want to get half a page of 10 or we can count and see. And again, let's say that we covered 82 um, green circles using dabbers um, out of 100 possible trials, you've then got some data that is very, very easy for you because it's all there. Uh, the other thing that is really fantastic um, to send home for parents is to uh, write target words on the side. So I might write on here, you know, our word is, I'm just going to say yes for an S at the end. For that row, the next row, our word might be C. And so I'll just write words either down the side or above, and I'll just ask the parents to practice. And then they can have, if we've got 10 core words, um, or if I'm using minimal pairs, or the complexity approach, and we're just trying to get some high practicing, um, I can have my little word list there, and then um, the parent can just instruct the child, just to, you know, let's just say the end of this row, let's see how many we get right, or let's see if we can get to the end of this row and say all of our words. So I find it's a really nice, easy thing to send for homework um, as well. So in terms of storage, I'll just quickly show you um, I actually did put a lot of these in a binder like this because uh, it's one of those things I can kind of flip through and I might say to the kids, you know, which one did you want to do today? If you are a themed therapist, you might want to organise them in terms of, you know, Halloween stuff and then fall and then, you know, Christmas and things like that. But otherwise, I just find it's really easy to put them in um, one of these folders, display folders, so that my kids can choose the one that they want to use. Uh, last thing I just want to let you know is that you can use anything, you can put anything on top of these, um, especially if they're laminated. Things like Play-Doh, um, my kids like drawing on them as well with um, markers, so they're really, really flexible. And basically, the aim of this, you know, resource here, this freebie, is just to get a lot of high practice in, but with minimal prep. So I hope that you can um, go to our comment section and you can get that freebie. You will have to uh, submit your email and then you get directed to this download. And there's 25 pages, lots of different themes, and I highly recommend um, printing them on coloured paper because they look really fantastic. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions and make sure you watch some of my other videos of simple therapy ideas that you can use in your speech therapy room. Thanks.